APP 2.0 Advanced Stitching Methods Hi, welcome to this tutorial. It will show you how to get the best stitching for your 360 videos. We are going to cover two main notions, template stitching and adaptive stitching. Let's start with the template stitching method. Template stitching is only here to help you get a first panorama when your images cannot be stitched by point detection and matching. In every case, you should first try to perform range stitching on your videos, and if that won't work, you have to consider trying other methods like template stitching. Let me show you what happens when I try to stitch this underwater footage using the standard method, such as GoPro using a single instant of my video. You can see that the cameras, which didn't capture any details, are not stitched with the rest of the pictures. This is where you need the stitching template. A camera only seeing blue sky would also require use of this method. I'm going to reopen this project, but this time I'm using the Stitches Panel option. For that purpose, I need to select a panorama created with the same rig, using the same camera configuration and shot in an environment as close as possible to this one. As you can see, the stitching is pretty good, but there are no links between the images. You can run a geometric analysis to detect control points using the image positions placed by the template stitching. Click on the control point editor tool and enable the advanced mode of this tool in the main window. You can set the detection quality and number of control points to add for each link. My detection quality and 100 points are good values, but you can lower these settings to save time. Once the analysis is complete, you have to re-optimize your stitching. Just click on the quick optimization icon. You can now focus on the next steps of your video stitching, stabilization, masking, color correction, director's cut. Here's another case. This indoor footage contains enough details to get a good standard stitch. Nevertheless, I'm going to use the template stitching method just to show you how the stitching is scene dependent and why the template stitching method must not systematically be used. As you can see, the result is really bad. This is due to multiple factors. First of all, you cannot guarantee that all your cameras have the exact same position in the rig between the template and the shooting. Then, because of the parallax, the stitching is environment dependent. When you stitch several images with parallax, you have to match them at a fixed distance. It can be on the foreground, on the background, but not both at the same time. There is nothing that can assure you the template has been stitched at the same distance as your current project. This is why we performed a geometric analysis on the underwater example. For this indoor shooting, a range stitching would be much more appropriate, but the use of adaptive stitching is even more relevant. I'm going to present the adaptive stitching method using the same example where the 360 camera moves from inside to outside. My videos are already synchronized and I just stitch them when they are outside because this is where I have the most detail in my images. Then I follow the usual workflow of straightening my horizon over time. As you can see the video starts upstairs then we go through the entrance hall and eventually go outside. You can notice that using the outside for stitching will produce an acceptable result inside and vice versa. Using only one instant for the stitching is definitely not an option. The RMS calculation will bring out this observation. I computed the RMS all along the concerned part of my video. Remember that the lower the RMS is, the better your stitching should be. Once it's done, you can see there are three different areas. A high RMS area, a medium RMS area, and a low RMS area. These three parts correspond to, respectively, the stairs, entrance hall, and outside, which are less and less confined spaces.
Then I'm going to cut my stitch timeline into different states corresponding to these areas, with a short transition between them corresponding to the passage from one environment to another. Notice that I'm separating the first part of the stairs from the second part because the camera position is slightly different in these two parts. You will also need to cut the beginning and end of your video. Then you are able to have a different stitch for each of these states. This is what we call adaptive stitching. Now you have to select arrange by right clicking on it and then you can perform arrange stitching on this state. For that purpose, make sure you use the current selection and the appropriate stitching preset, which is GoPro in my example. Once the stitching of a state has changed, you need to update the RMS value of this area. You should notice some improvement on the curve. Repeat this step for all your states. Here are three video snapshots showing the differences between the classic stitching method and the adaptive stitching method. You will notice that there aren't many differences for outside because my original stitching had to be done outside too. You can now get the best out of your 360 videos. Thank you for watching.